Hey, hi to you, network friends. So today, I thought I'd walk through the initial setup of uh, the Cradle Point L950 series LTE adapter. Um, we've got quite a few 4G uh, devices out there in our network, and uh, uh, quite a few of the um, uh, the 850s, I believe, uh, the CBA 850s out there. This is a new model, um, kind of lightweight, compact. Uh, we'll see how it it works out for us. So we'll go ahead and open this box up. I've already done this once just to familiarize myself so we can go through this. What you get here in this box of course is the getting started guide. Um, <clears throat> and this application they want you to download the Cradle Point Verify. It does allow you to log on to the uh, NetCloud, the Cradle Point NetCloud, and you do need NetCloud to kind of manage these things. Um, and that's a service that you buy along with the Cradle Point, uh, kind of like a maintenance or, or uh, cloud-based uh, application. We already have that, so we'll add it to our existing uh, uh, NetCloud account. Um, the application basically goes through and says, oh, do you have all the screws? Do you have all the bolts? Do you have all the pieces? And if not, you click a button and it, they'll send you something, I guess. Uh, some legal information, a mounting, a wall plate, and then the unit. Just, uh, pull this guy out of here. Oops. And so there she is. Um, and the first time I pulled this out, I noticed something very unusual, is there is no power uh, adapter you can get with this. The CBA 850s do have a power adapter. This depends on PoE power to power this guy. Uh, so that's very important. Um, uh, it took me a while to figure that out. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, and then there's a little teensy door here for the SIM cards. You can have two SIM cards in there. In some installations, we actually have two SIM cards in there. And Cradle Point uh, can walk you through setting this up. So if you have two SIM cards, each with like 300 or 400 gig of data, and you know you're going to use like a, you know 800 gig of data, you set thresholds on each one, it'll just automatically switch over. It can only use one SIM card at a time, but it can switch over based on a threshold you set in the uh, NetCloud uh, uh, page. All right, so that is the device. Inside here we have the... This is all these screws and uh, mounting hardware and whatnot that they have. Interesting. And that's basically what the application uh, that you download on your phone does. It allows you to add it on the Cradle Point app, but then it just shuts down. Little network cord. Two antennas in here. Back in here very nicely. Let's go ahead and take those guys out. Maybe there we go. We're not going to mount it today, so we'll put that back. Put that back. Let's go ahead and add these to the the main, the secondary antennas. Okay. I learned something very interesting this last year. Um, obviously, cellular technology is growing and growing. You got five G now, <coughs> but um, any cellular service that uses MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, the two antennas you do <coughs> actually do do some load sharing occasionally. Um, and what I found out, I was out in the middle of nowhere, Washington State, and um, I had some external antennas, the big, the big kind, um, that looked like all well, big, huge triangles, and one that's just a really super high gain antenna. Um, if you set them four to six feet apart, you get a better MIMO experience. Uh, when I had them both right next to each other, I was getting maybe, and I'm talking about rural, I was getting maybe 1.5 down and maybe 250k up. I separated them out and all of a sudden uh, apart, six feet apart, all of a sudden I was getting 10 down and one and a half up. So this is like really rural. I mean, we're out in the middle of a cow field in uh, Washington State. And that does make a big difference. So uh, that's the device. Uh, let's go ahead and let's just turn around here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this thing up. Um, I have a little PUE injector here. I'm not quite sure what model it is. Um, what I did discover, and I have not v validated yet, is some of these PoE injectors, they're really made for stuff like cameras and whatnot. They're only around 100 meg, so they won't run a gig. Um, I was not able to hook my computer up through this. I just use this for power, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that guy in. Take one cord here. Plug him into the... Let's go ahead and light on here. 
go. Power data out. Um, this does not come with a SIM card, so you need to su supply a SIM card. We'll go ahead and put the SIM card in here. And here's another little kind of oddity that I discovered about this thing. Is uh, we'll open up the, the SIM card door. And we'll take our little SIM card in there. Just kind of have a just kind of show you which way to put it in, which is basically you're putting it in upside down. And we'll put this in there so he sticks. There he is. Um, if you do not put the door back on, it will not connect to the LTE network. So there's some little button that it pushes knowing that the SIM card door is stuck. So I put the SIM card in one of these at first, and it just sat there and, and blinked blue uh, forever. I shut the SIM card door, plugged it back in, gave it a little bit of time, and it came up. Uh, it was also blinking red because I was trying to go from the... Um, let me see if you can see here. It says here we have LAN 1, LAN 2 PUE. So I'm going to take the PUE and plug it into here. And all this really doing is supplying dumb power to the device. That's all we're really doing here, supplying dumb power. Um, I've already scanned in the IMEI into um, our uh, uh, NetCloud account, added the device, so it should register as soon as it boots up. We get a little power light. On the top, you'll start to see some lights flash red here, for example. Uh, it'll take a little while to boot up. And as I mentioned, I, I, I think if I, I had a PoE injector that did gig, it would be okay. But basically, the flashing blue was meaning um, LAN connection bad. So it was probably only trying... Probably only has a you know one gig uplink and it was only seeing 100 meg out of that stupid device and so it was just kind of dumb. So we'll go ahead and let this thing flash for a bit. Flashing white. <clears throat> Flashing white means it's connected to NetCloud. I believe it should go solid pretty soon. Oh, actually, you know what? We're gonna have to plug the LAN in. So let's go ahead and get another little network cable here. Oh, we've got solid white. So we'll plug. LAN 2. I'm guessing you could probably run two devices directly if you did have a, an appropriate pass-through a PUE injector. Like I said, these are pro this is probably 12 years old, so hard to say what it was doing. And we'll go ahead and plug this into our NIC card here. All right. And let's watch the screen here. Okay, so... Internet access, it does say public network. Our network connection is up. Let's go ahead and start a ping to the internet. Okay, we're getting internet, that's good. Um, so basically what I have here is we do have the L, oh, it turned green, cool. Our L950 uh, has come up. We've got green in the NetCloud menu. Take a look. Internal SIM 1, that is correct, we are internal SIM 1. Tells us what our Ethernet speed uh, data usage is. We'll go into the SIM 1 and take a look at the stats so far. Been up for 13 seconds. Wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Come down here to all these, these numbers here. We're getting a RSI of negative 67, RSVP of negative 98. Not great. Um, eh, I'm a little bit in rural Washington too, so we're not getting real super hard signals. We'll go ahead and do a speed test here. Back here and try a speed test. Uh, speed test. We'll try Google speed test first. Run a speed test. So inside the house, <clears throat> five down uh, with uh, LTE is pretty normal for this location. 2.4 up. That's pretty normal for this location. Um, I will try some other tests um, on our deck, which is on the second floor. Um, I've got some other antennas I'm going to hook up to this thing and see how fast I can get the boost up speed to go. But it's not terrible. 5 by 2 I mean, that'll let you do email and some other simple web browsing, but not a lot. Anyway, that is the setup of Cradle Point uh, L950. Um, pretty simple box. 
And like I said, the gotchas are, make sure your PoE injector, if you're going to run that, run your data through the PoE injector, that it's a, a gig uh, PoE injector and it's compatible. I will try that later with all, I think I've got some other PoE injectors I can try. Um, make sure you close the SIM door before you try it, otherwise it won't connect to the, to the network. And that your SIM's activated, of course. Anyway, there you go. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Okay, so I thought we'd do another test. We came up uh, to the deck on the second floor. Um, I got my high gain antennas out. I have two of them here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run this cable inside the house. Uh, we'll hook it up to the uh, L950. We'll see what kind of signal throughput we can do. Uh, one thing I was going to show you, though, is um, if you're doing a lot of cellular work, and especially aiming these high gain antennas, these directional antennas, you really need one of these Wilson Pros. Um, I basically got this thing, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, we're down to about 59, negative 59. The lower the number, the better. The higher the the amplitude, the, the higher the signal. Um, I've seen as much as 43 when you're pretty much right underneath the cell phone tower. Um, but basically, I adjusted this guy. And so he's pointing about, oh, a little west of south. Um, and I've got two antennas here. We're going to hook each one of these guys up and stay tuned for that. Okay, so um, I went ahead and uh, I went ahead and uh, hooked this up to the uh, uh, the high gain antennas that we placed outside on the deck and uh, looped those cables in here. So I've got these two cables uh, coming in here, going right into the back of the cradle point L50. As you can see there, I did go and find a gigabit PoE adapter um, injector, and I am able to go directly from uh, the PoE port on LAN 2 through the PoE injector right into my computer. And we have some pretty good ping times coming out here right now, but let's go ahead and do a little spin test here. So now we're, we're higher and we're directional. So we'll go ahead and test again. Let's see what we got. Okay, so now we're cooking with gas. Uh, we're up to 40, 43, 42, 36. A lot better speed with those two antennas. They're spread apart about four feet. I just had a piece of aluminum that's about four feet long. Okay, now we're getting up to what? 10, 10 meg up. That is phenomenal. Um, so we're doing really good with these, uh, these dual exterior antennas. We'll do one more test. I'll go ahead and unplug the secondary antenna and see how well we do with just one antenna. Okay, so now we're just running on one antenna. Let's go ahead and I'm going to take a picture of that real quick. And we'll test again. Not quite as good, 27, 26. You know, we were up to almost 43.50 there for a while. Yeah, 33 on that one. 28 on this one. Yeah, still not terrible with that direction antenna, but I believe it does make a little bit of a difference. And I think once you start to get a load, it'll it'll be a lot better. So here we have 28 by 16. Obviously, the speed of the network itself is always a factor, and you never know quite what's going on with uh, the network. So that one was 28 by 16. This was 33 by 10, uh, and that wasn't bad. That upload speed is actually pretty darn good. We'll do another test here just for fun.